I love the leaderboard. I love the number of guys that have a chance. And it's anybody's game. Yeah, it's a glorious swing. I've won at every stage of the game. I haven't broken through on the PGA Tour, but I know I can win. That's a birdie for Kim. I was three behind at Sony, so always behind and playing, no pressure. I'm battling and I'm hanging in there. Oh, that is huge. And if I stick to the game plan that I've played with the last three days, I'll be in with a great chance. It's like a one round shootout for one of the most prestigious titles in golf. Wide open Sunday heading your way from Dublin, Ohio. It's always nice to be back at Jack's place. I've loved this tournament since the first time that I played it. I've, I've loved this golf course in all of its different iterations. It's one of the iconic events on the PGA Tour. The dream, the vision of the great champion, Jack Nicklaus. One of the most lush and gorgeous golf courses in the world. I've always had really good vibes here. You know, I have played well here. I have had success in the past walking off 18, shaking Jack's hand. It just adds to that specialness, and hopefully we have that chance uh, later this week. This is a golf course that, you know, it's always in really good shape, and it demands you to hit the ball in the fairway off the tee. You know, it's just a golf course that I've liked since I, I came on property the first time. Just happened to have also played really well around here. Patrick Cantley is the winner for the second time at Memorial. My relationship with Jack, I don't take lightly. I've been fortunate to, to play well in this tournament a couple times. I've never shaken his hand and it's a congratulatory shake, so uh, I'm hoping to make that happen. Love coming here. You know, Mr. Nicholas built a great golf course, and so it's fun for us to play. If you're gonna be on the leaderboard on Sunday, you have to be hitting it well. You can't fake around this golf course. It's an ode to Mr. Nicholas. He's created one of the best golf tournaments in the world. That's a few events to me personally that are elevated by themselves, and this is one of them. This is a challenging golf course where you want to win. A lot of us want to win here, I wanted to win. And when you add the name and legacy of Jack Nicklaus it makes it even better. First time I played here, I played bad, I missed the cut, and I think I told Adam, man, I don't know if I'm ever going back to that golf course. And he was telling me, you know, you're gonna go back and you're gonna love it. You're tailor-made for that golf course. And funny enough, the next time we came was 2020. Jack Nicklaus pumped fists with John Rahm, who has taken the tournament title here. Proud of you, happy for you, and uh, good more. Thank you many, many more for you. Just trying to be like Number you. Number one. Thank you. Luckily, I came out on top this week, and, and that made me number one in the world, which it's, it's a true honor to be able to do it here at your house, Mr. Nicholas. Well, we're happy to have you sitting here, and we're happy to have you as our champion. Nothing close to what you've done. Oh, you, got, you got a lot of yours, my friend. John Rahm's been an unbelievable player forever, so you know no one's surprised to see him doing what he's doing. You know when John Rahm tees it up, he's probably going to be at the top of the leaderboard. John Rahm wins again. He's making it a habit. It's all about John Rahm right now in the game of golf. He's definitely put the rest of the tour, I think, on notice that we, you know we got to step it up. We're going to try and compete with him. He's a tremendous golfer. He has zero weaknesses. He has been this dude for a long time. I think he's got the highest win percentage in the last X amount of years. He's got the highest top tens by a mile. The guy's incredible. I've heard from a few players that were major champions that once you win the Masters, things change. I didn't realize to what extent, because it's, it's just more the reaction from people, right? The excitement they feel once they see you and, and how bad they want to picture or, or an autograph is significantly higher than it was before. It's been very, very special. One of my goals for earlier in the year is to win multiple times. Again, on the PG Tour, and I won my first two events. So after LA, you kind of need to reset because you when know, I was getting close to accomplishing everything I had set my mind to. If you have to reset or refresh your goals, it's an amazing thing because that means you're exceeding your expectations. You just want to keep winning tournaments, right? So if I play good golf and win tournaments, you eventually will get to number one. 
Scotty took the number one from me, and then I took it back in LA, and then he had it back, and then I took it back, and now he's had a great stretch of golf when he has it back again, right? So it's not like any of us has given it up. It's like we're just playing at a level that well, we're taking it back from the other, which is a lot of fun. The course that Jack built. It is a glorious Thursday morning in Dublin, Ohio for the 48th edition of this Memorial Tournament presented by Workday. The Muirfield Village Golf Club is in pristine condition. John Rahm was struggling. He was one over with eight to go. He turned it on three under the rest of the way to get it to two under 70 for the 2020 champ here. Pull day on the greens, but still a very good round of golf. Keep hitting fairways, keep hitting greens and giving myself chances, right? Obviously, it was relatively stress-free from after that first hole, those last eight holes, and very comfortable play that way. But yeah, that was the main difference, making a couple putts. 12th or better, 14 starts in a row. The tournament runs through this man. Scotty Scheffler for part. This man has not been rolling it well. Another bogey for Scotty. First to play, the winner of the Memorial Tournament in 2019 and 2021 from Jupiter, Florida. Please welcome Patrick Cantlay. Cantlay from the bunker at 18. This one could get away from you. Oh, that is special. It's only going to get harder as the week goes on. Look at that. What a round. It's a course I enjoy. I played well here, which is always nice to come back to a place that you've had success. So it should be a good week. He is playing some very, very good golf. This is about as special as it gets. He also has a new man on the bag. Patrick Cantlay alongside his new partner, Joe LaCava. We know who Joe LaCava is. Mm -hmm. Tiger's ex-caddy. Joe LaCava is one of the greatest guys to have on the bag. He's got a great golf mind. He's good company, so it's a win, win, win. Oh, yeah, look at this. Look at this shot. Look at this. Might go in. Might go in. Might go in. It is in. That was incredible. The bond is very deep, and it runs from basically 95. Joe is one of the you know, best caddies out here, and there's no doubt. I like the way he worked. I liked his personality on how he was with his players. I think the big man is going to land it. I think that's what Joe LaCava, Patrick Cantlay, working it out, learning along the way. It's been good so far. It'll take a little time for us both to get into full-on routines and feel totally comfortable, so I'm sure that'll improve with time. He's a pro and has seen all the places before. He's caddied for a number of great players. I'm sure he's had a bunch of good weeks around here, and so have I. I've done a lot of good in my golf game this year. Parts of my game feel really solid. Just need to have a week where it all kind of matches up. That's usually what it takes to win. What goes into your perfect Muirfield milkshake? <laughs> well, you know, it depends what flavor you like. No. Oh. Honestly, I've always been an Oreo milkshake guy. Uh, cookies and cream, so just vanilla ice cream, milk, Oreos. Oh, that's easy. Uh, it's, it's vanilla ice cream, Oreos, peanut butter, and banana. You walk through the clubhouse, you walk through the locker room, you go downstairs towards dining, and then you have that little corner where all the milkshakes are made, and that's kind of, you know, where a lot of guys are getting their calories in for the day. And that's the only place they're making them. And just for the players. I think it was two years ago we had, I think it was a little over 1,100 milkshakes we had for the week. Now, that's a lot of milkshakes to be for those guys baked down in the locker room. I went with the vanilla Snickers and Oreo one. It was unbelievable. I could have three of those every day. No, I did not have one for breakfast today. I only had one, and I had half of it because I cannot have one this during the week, hopefully on Sunday. I'm pretty simple on milkshake. I just do malt and Snickers. I either do an Oreo or I do a vanilla with Reese's. Uh, just a vanilla milkshake. That's all I need. I don't need anything special. 
I'm kind of a vanilla malt guy. The Buckeye is, is by far our biggest seller. When Tony Fino and I did the, the charity match on 18, they brought us Buckeyes, and I've never looked back. So I have to say the Buckeye. To be honest, I think they might have started making them smaller this year. I, I don't know if that's on purpose or what. Players like that ice cream and his milkshakes, don't they? <laughs> Mirfield's famous milkshakes were also a hit in another way. Three PGA Tour players and five Workday Ambassadors took on a closest to the pin competition to win $50,000 towards one of Workday's charities. But first, they had one minute to knock down milkshakes to earn bonus shots. In three, two, one, go! Oh, almost! Oh, that was close. Are you kidding me? That was really close, y'all. Oh, oh, it was right over. They're waving in the wind now. Yes. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> this, is, this is a robbery. Oh, there we go. All right, 45 seconds. More shots. Woo! Oh, yeah! Here we go. Wow! Oh, yeah, yeah. I told you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, two! That counts double. Three, two, one! Oh. Okay! All right. Nice! Three out of five. I won't take it back. Next, the players took their extra shots and moved to the closest to the pin challenge. All right, 80 yards, all right, come on. Okay, get there. Okay, nice start. 10 feet, four inches. Good distance. Good distance. Very nice. Well, how far do you think that one is? 11. Seven feet, seven inches. Seven, seven feet? Hello, Don't baby. underestimate yourself, Hello, Kate Manning. All right. He's right at it. Nice shot. Two feet, five inches. Pretty good. <laughs> Hopefully get inside that. I just want to get closer than Peyton. That's my only goal today. <laughs> oh, I like this. I like this. Get close! Oh, baby! Okay! Give me five feet, give me five feet. Five feet, nine inches. Boom, I'll take it. Oh, this one looks good. Oh, yeah. Woo! Awesome! Say something better. Five feet, three Yeah, that's oh, what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah, nice! Save the best for last. Oh, wow. Nah. Two feet, five inches. Two feet and five what? inches. Matt tied with Rory McIlroy, $50,000. Thank in you. You're in Rory's name to work day charities. We'll take that. The amateurs in this group include Steph Curry and Jake Owen. Yes, nice sir. Jake. The professional in this group from Dallas, Texas. Please welcome Jordan Speed. I play a lot with Jake, and I've played with Steph before, but they outstruck me significantly. I mean, they striked it. I was all over the map to start. And I was like, man, these guys are showing me up. They don't even play golf. You see the influence that Steph has. You know, we're walking, and no one's even looking at me. You know, they're all looking back for where Steph is. I'm like, all right, I'll just walk right to, through to the next tee. It was a blast. The tee shot was solid. The the, the little hundred yard wedge shot, you know, I struggle with my distance just a little bit. I love photography. I love Steph Curry. <laughs> I love Jordan Speed. And uh, I thought it'd be cool to bring my new little Leica out here today that I picked up in New York this week. See if I can get some cool black and white images. Yeah. Speaking of which.
one of the reasons I love photography so much is that in my life, it just seems like I'm in these moments like this and they all go by so fast and then you're supposed to just remember it mentally. But for years, I've always carried a camera with me and um, there are moments that I savor forever and I get to go back and look at it and remember moments like this. After the morning wave sets the pace at four under par, Jack's place puts the stars to the test as the afternoon conditions intensify. Just a little off the left edge. Did he get it right? He sure did. Third toughest hole on the golf course and only the fourth birdie of the day there. Jordan Speed from the bunker. Downhill wide, downhill to the hole. It does get to the point of the ridiculous with him, doesn't it? I feel like a bunker play is one of the strengths of my game, and I hit a pretty fantastic shot there, and it just gave me a lot of confidence. It was nice to beat a tough golf course. I truly love this golf course. I think it's brilliant. Um, it's playing really hard right now. It just feels like you're getting punched a lot. The back nine is awesome. There's a bunch of birdie holes, but then you get to the last three and you're just like, I'll play them in one over, I'll take them. You could sell three pars to the leader for a pretty penny right now. McElroy, no problem making his birdie. Moves to three under and a shot back. He's had all kinds of opportunities. Just hasn't been able to capitalize. Oh my gosh, that was brutal. He had nothing. In the bunker off the tee at 18. Triple bogey to finish up. It's a golf course that I, I really enjoy. It's a, it's a city that I like. It's as close as I can get to feeling a home event. But any time that you can play in Mr. Nicholson's event is, is obviously a, a great honor as well. Shot. Sauce. Pure sauce there, Justin Thomas. Justin Thomas returns to the Memorial Tournament presented by Workday for the first time since 2021 and holds fond memories at Mirfield Village. That was just a nice little swing. You guessed it. Grab a wedge and hack it out. That's all you can do. Wow. Yeah, the blueprint went according to plan, didn't it? JT's success at Jack's Place speaks for itself. Three top tens and a runner-up finish at the 2020 Workday Charity Open. Oh my goodness. All the way! Oh, can you believe that? It's definitely a, a life goal and dream of mine. I've been fortunate to, to play well in this tournament a couple times, to be there when he's there for the last couple groups, but uh, I'm never shaking his hand as a congratulatory shake, so uh, I'm hoping to make that happen. I'm not where I feel like I should or want to be. I believe in myself that, you know, my best is yet to come. There's a lot of great things ahead of me. Even without a coveted Memorial Tournament win, this week holds deeper meaning. What's going on in here? How are you? What, what's this thing back here? I don't know. How are you doing? Good to see you, Mr. Congratulations, Mr. my Thank friend. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I that Justin is, stronger. he's obviously not my son, but he's like another one to me. He's one of the kids that have come to me. Justin's come to me more than anybody. We've talked a lot. Being out on tour, I've learned from talking to people like Mr. Nicholas and, and other guys that, you know, you want to surround yourself with the best. You want to be talking to people that have the most experience, have, you know, the most knowledge. And you can't really get any better than, than talking to, uh, you know, one of the best himself. He's always there for advice. He's always there to shoot you straight. He's, he's never going to sugarcoat anything as he shouldn't. Justin's father, Mike, I said, I don't want to interfere. He said, no, no, no. He said, I want you to talk to him. He says, you know, he listens to you. But I enjoy sitting down with him. I enjoy spending time with him. I enjoy uh, watching their success. Keeps me young, keeps me involved in the game, keeps me relevant to what's going on in the game. I didn't really get in a position to try to mentor anybody. I've always been in a position that, and, and I, when I first started, I mean, I go back and when I was 22 or three years old, I remember Bruce Devlin was having trouble. I went over and I worked with him and helped him with his game and he won the tournament and beat me. 
but I didn't care about that. I've been a very fortunate, lucky guy to be able to learn from some great people. My dad was a great teacher as far as just teaching me ways of life. Wisdom I got from Bobby Jones. I was 15 years old and qualified for the U.S. Amateur, and Jones was speaking at our banquet, and he came out and watched me play. He played where I grew up at Scioto, and Jones won the Open there way back in 26. He was kind of the guy I followed as I grew up. It was great to be able to understand what Jones did, how he played, and what, how he became a good player, and the things that he did really helped me immensely within my career. So I saw that, what he did for me, and the opportunity to do that for some of the younger guys, from my standpoint, is something that I think is uh, I hopefully, hopefully pretty important in some of the kids' lives. How many 83-year-olds have young guys that are 20 years old come and talk to them and want to talk about advice and what to do? Not many. I'm pretty, I feel very honored and privileged that they do that. And uh, I'm delighted to be able to sit down and talk and, and impart any kind of knowledge or help that I can give them. I am not exactly contemporary to these guys. I see them in the locker room. I sit down. Uh, we, we start talking. They've, they're a little nervous as far as getting started. We started and we, you know, we had a nice conversation. That's the type of relationship I want to have. How are you? How are you? Good to see you. You well? I've got, I've got 30 odd players down at the Bears Club as members that are all tour players. And I talk to them constantly, see them constantly, have lunch with them a lot. I don't know why they respect an opinion of some old guy like me, but they do. Quite a few guys have come to me, and I'm happy to do that. If I can give them something about their golf game, if I can give them something about how to play something, or give them something mentally, I'm delighted to do that. I had a lot of help along the way, and I'm delighted to pass it on. I go back to Jack Grout, who taught me how to play. Jack, he says, I just wanted you to know that there are many, many different ways to play the game of golf, and I think you ought to understand what they are and whether you want to accept any of them or not. It doesn't make any difference. It's just you should know. I don't know every young player, but I will. I get to know them all as, as time goes on. I'm a very blessed person to be in that position. Jack's impact reaches the game's brightest, as well as the Dublin community, through the many charitable initiatives, the Nicholases, the tournament, and workday support. First time I met Jack Nicholas. First time I met Jack, first encounter I think I had with Jack. Yeah, I just actually met him today. Just had a lunch and he came over and said hello and to be able to have the opportunity to say hi and have a conversation was pretty cool. My dad told me a story when I was a kid. I met him once at a tournament and I got his name wrong and I don't think he was very happy about it at the time. <laughs> I think I called him like Mr. Nicholas or something. I was, I was young, but you know, he was nice. The first time I met Jack was in Florida in 2000 and I got to play a practice round with him, which was pretty amazing. I was a 20 year old kid from Australia and was, you know, dream come true kind of stuff. The week that I won the workday, the event right before the memorial in 2020, he showed up on Sunday after I won. So it wasn't the handshake that you essentially get after winning the memorial, but it was something very special. I've been lucky enough to spend a, a quite a bit of time with Jack and, and his wife, Barbara. They're kind of like the mom and dad of, of the, the Jupiter crew. I won the Jack Nicholas Award in my senior year, so I know I spent some time with them there. And I think that was the first time I was able to have a bit of a conversation. And I asked him about his first US Open, because shortly after that, I was going to play on my first at Oakmont. The first time I met Jack was before the 2014 Masters, and I met Jack and Arnold at the same time. And I was just in a conversation with them, too, and I was 20 years old. and. They just couldn't have been nicer. 2014, I was just able to go up and introduce myself and, and say thank you and, and just say how appreciative I was for everything he's you know done in his career. It was a special moment for me to finally meet Jack. It's still a surreal moment. It's something that I will remember for the rest of my life. That was fun. I've met Mr. Nicholas a couple times now. He gave me a phone call after school was over when he told me I won, and then um, I went down to the Bears Club over the winter and hung out and saw him there a couple times, and, um, and then I had lunch with him on Monday here, so it's been cool just to kind of pick his brain a little bit and just, you know, you kind of just hear stories and stuff, so it's been cool. I wasn't nervous or anything. It's just cool. It, it almost feels surreal. 
I was in a weird spot last year too with, you know, just coming off a tough loss at national championship. And then now that I'm here, it's, it's very cool. Along with winning the 2022 Jack Nicholas Award as the top collegiate golfer, Oklahoma product Chris Goderup also made his PGA Tour debut last spring with a top 10 finish at the Puerto Rico Open. Yeah, Let's go! Now, the Corn Ferry Tour standout makes his debut at Muirfield Village. The course is obviously in amazing shape. It's tough, the rough's up, and you gotta hit it good, so it'll be a fun test for sure. It's got a US Open type feel to it right now, so. Anything under par every day is a pretty good score. I told you, you just want to leave it right uphill, Sam. You better play really good or else you're going to get eliminated pretty quickly, so. This is definitely difficult and it's been fun to mess around with so far, so we'll see what happens in real time, but so far so good. Me, Victor, and Eckrod are all members at the same club at home, so um, we play together. And he's obviously played really well and has played great this year, so it's fun to just kind of be around that and see how close you are to that level. The guys that are week in, week out up there, they're playing really good for a long time. And college, you only need three rounds, really good, and courses aren't as hard here. You know, obviously this place is very challenging, and you just got to stack good rounds, and if you make a mistake, try to make as little of a mess up as possible and then move on with it. So. That's probably the biggest thing I've learned. Outside of a win, I mean, four really good rounds. That's what I'm looking for, just putting four really good rounds together and see what happens. So that's the plan. Yeah, that was fun. Congrats. Hey, thank you. That's nuts. Greedy fish. All right, we're at the lake house here at Memorial. What's the suggested? But my recommendation would be the pork and pimento panini up there. It's actually our lake house exclusive. That sounds really good. Let's do one of those. Sure. Yeah, Ooh, that's, that's hot. Give it a rating. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that'll work. Mouth's a little full. Yeah. This is like a... You know, not that I would ever do this, but uh, if you went out at school and it was 2 a.m. and you needed something to eat, this is perfect right up that alley. We'll give you like a eight and a half or nine, nine range, eight and a half. Pretty damn good. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. How are you? I nice nice see you. you. Yeah. Thank you for coming together. Good nice to meet you. you. Hey, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for helping. Yeah, our two latest Play Yellow Ambassadors yeah. are here playing in the tournament. Good. Goderup built a new connection to Mr. Nicholas this week as he and Justin Lauer were announced as Play Yellow Ambassadors, a program benefiting Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. I'm really happy to be a part of it. Yeah. Happy to have you. Yeah. You got it. Thank you. Take a few pictures. Three, two, one. Hot. It's a beautiful Friday morning at Muirfield Village. As marquee names begin the second round, 2014 champion Hideki Matsuyama gets off to a good start. Nice four under 32 on his opening nine today. Five under par. That's a great round for Patrick Cantlay. When you get a warm morning, um, but not a lot of wind, yeah, the golf course, the golf course is scorable. 11 strokes better than yesterday. Bravo, Sanders Schauffele. It was a scorable golf course today. Third birdie of the day for Jordan Spieth. Right back to three under for the week. The ball was still going, but the greens were a little bit more receptive, and I felt like maybe a few of the pins were a little more gettable. And here comes Rory McIlroy. Four under par. But it's David Lipsky who posts the early lead in the clubhouse at six under. That's David Lipsky tapping in for another birdie. I'm coming off of like a little bit of a bad stretch, but good golf's right around the corner, and that's why I kept telling myself and kept working hard, believing what I'm doing, and uh, that's why I'm here. Ricky Fowler for birdie. Continues the good form that he's had this entire season. Been in a bit of a drought as far as winning goes. He may be next. 
In his 14th start at the Memorial Tournament, Ricky Fowler is still searching for his first win at Jack's Place. Twice a runner-up, a victory would hold added significance. Well, I've got to shake his hand quite a few times coming off 18 on Sunday, but never being the, the last one standing. So that would definitely be a special moment. He's someone that's always you know, wanted to see me play well and always been there to help out and, and give his advice or his two cents. So it'd be quite an accomplishment, really knowing better to, to do it in front of. After a few years of struggles on the course, Fowler has recaptured his form this season with five top tens and a runner-up finish. Just go ahead and go in, Ricky Fowler. He now looks to return to the winner's circle for the first time in more than four years. It's hard to win out here. It's part of golf. It's part of life. You, you know, you're not always on top. It's not always going to be great and success. So you're going to have to deal with some, some down times. And it's more about how you battle through those and, and ultimately come back. You know, a lot more fun to actually be playing on weekends and, and having chances to finish well at tournaments and, and be in the mix at times. But I think the biggest thing is really just being able to finally build momentum and confidence. I'm getting a lot more out of rounds and giving myself chances to, to move forward. It's really fun to see kind of that sparkle back, that drive, that patience, and good things come from that. They just do. It's just a matter of time. Like Fowler, Sahith Digala is hungry for a victory and trending in the right direction with four top five finishes and 19 starts this season. He's got lots of talent, and every now and again, he produces magic. I feel like I play some of my best golf on really hard golf courses, and out here especially, I feel like the hardest part is approach shots, and I feel like that's one of the best parts of my game. He has quite a creative game, I think, and that's nice to see a lot of young players are so conditioned to playing track man and kind of perfect or optimal golf, and he had a lot of variety in his game. One of these days, Stigal is going to be a big time winner. I always had like a attraction to this golf course. If I were to pick this up sometime in my career, it would be incredible. I've kind of had this one circled. I just really love the place. It's kind of neat to see all this. Certainly captured the best of my career. He spent his entire decorated career knowing that one day what he did on the golf course would not matter as much as how he treated people and how he loved others. I'd like to introduce my father, Larry Nelson, this year's Memorial Honoree. There are things that you don't in expect in this game. I mean, I expected to win another tournament or win a major, and then your career kind of ends. Then you get a call from Jack, and he's a captain's club, thought that you should be the honoree for 2023. So I'm taken back because this is something I didn't expect. Larry embodies what it is in the DNA of the Memorial Tournament. He won on the biggest stages in golf, but he's always kept his humility and grace about him that we admire. Larry broke through with two wins in 1979 and won a total of 10 PGA Tour events over the span of a decade, including the 1981 PGA Championship, the 1983 US Open, and the 1987 PGA Championship. You get some honors during your career, and you're so much involved in the career itself that it doesn't quite mean as much. So when something like this comes up, it's just a lot of gratitude for what I did for a number of years. To have the best player who has ever played the game recognize that uh, was very important. It's great to have somebody like a Larry Nelson who has lived life the way he wanted to live his life, the way he believes in living his life, and has done it the right way. I didn't know what to expect, but he actually made me better looking. So. To know that this one is going to be on the wall with Byron, with Arnold, with all these great players, I don't seem to quite deserve it, but I'm so appreciative of the fact that I'm here. Nelson's 10 PGA Tour victories are one more than Matt Kuchar, who is celebrating a special anniversary this week at Mirfield Village. 
One of the hardest things to do is just two putt on the last hole to win. I had 20 feet of the downhill with a lot of break and I had a good line. And I was really so focused on not letting the putt get away from me. Two putts to win it. The greens at Muirfield Village are some of the fastest of the year. That putt on 18 was certainly a scary one. I think my mind was so sharp on taking care of what was in front of me. He only needs one. Matt Kuchar closes the door on the 2013 Memorial Tournament. And now Kuchar will get the chance to meet up with a man he idolizes, Jack Nicklaus. A real honor to win this tournament. The roar that goes along with a winning putt and one of, of distance. And the crowd erupts. It's such a great feeling of elation. As Matt Kuchar marks 10 years since his Muirfield Village moment, it's also been a decade since Billy Horschel's first PGA Tour victory. The defending champion is putting in the work off the course to keep up with the demands of today's game. I probably work out four days a week with Alex at home. One more time, Billy. A lot of stuff we do is corrective stuff. We're trying to get a little more powerful, get a little more strength, get a little more distance as I get older. It's great rotation. You know, in my 14 years on tour, has changed. I mean, my driving distance has gone up a little bit over my 14 years, and there's other things I can do to, to create more distance, but I don't want to change too much of what's made me successful on the PJ Tour. Super set it. 10 reps over there, eight reps over here. Trying to win a tournament, it's just like, I'm strong in what, you know, I think I am at this moment in time. And, you know, can I push through the negative thoughts? Can I push through the bad breaks? Can I push through not swinging the way I want? Can I somehow find a way to get this done? You ready, buddy? Let's go. See you tomorrow, buddy. The early morning workouts paid off at Muirfield Village in 2022. Horschel finished in the top 10 in strokes gained off the tee, tee to green and around the green to capture a four-shot victory. Could it be an eagle? Good night! But it's not just the highlight reel that makes the win stand out from Horschel's seven PGA Tour titles. Here comes the walk with a whole lot of family in the gallery. One of the goals I've had since I've been on the PGA Tour, especially since I've had kids, is to win in front of my wife and my kids. My wife has never been at any of my victories, neither has my kids. He knows where the family is, trying to get his mind around one of the great moments of your career. Let's watch Daddy do his thing. Finally, to accomplish that goal and have them there on the 18th green, that memorial was something that I've dreamed about for a long time. And to have those photos and videos for the rest of our lives is something that's really special. I try to play around like you and Tug would, just well, like you would, big well, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. I've always wanted to be associated with the greats in the game of golf. And when people look at the winners, to have my name next to theirs. It means a lot to know that uh, I'm winning events with Jack Nicklaus' name on it. It shows I'm doing the right things in the game of golf, and I have the ability to play well at bigger events and tougher golf courses. Next to play, the winner of last year's Memorial Tournament, please welcome Billy Horschel. Anytime you come back in the fin, you have a lot of great memories and a lot of good vibes. But I think you can get too caught up in trying to replicate what you did last year and understand that it's a completely different year. Billy is just not having it today. Yeah, working really hard, trying to do the right things. And technically, it's, it's not that far off, but I'm not able to hit the cut the way I want. And having to be more precise on a course like this, it's just, uh, it's tough. And I'll keep plugging away, and hopefully it comes around soon. Following an opening round 84, Horschel bounces back with an even par 72. Two rounds in the books. That's where it will end here for his title defense. A pair of 75s will not make the weekend. He has got to make the cut right on the number. First time we've seen back-to-back -back over par rounds for Scotty Scheffler this season. 
Pretty straightforward here at 15 for Fowler. He might have made it. What an eagle. Ricky Fowler. He moves into contention. Short game's better than where it was. Putting's better than where it was. Obviously, everything is, is better than where it was. 95 yards to the flag. Laid up to where he could spin it. Go in! <laughs> Walk off three. One time indeed. Another 70 for John Rahm. Looking to win this for the second time. But the round of the day belongs to Hideki Matsuyama. Bogey free Friday for Hideki Matsuyama. The course is playing tough, especially the greens. But today, the thoughts went in, and so I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Oh, what a great read. Seven under par, 65 today. He didn't even wait till moving day. I really like this golf course because it, it's, it's just fantastic here. But it is a difficult golf course, and that's the big challenge. But today, the, the result was good. Matsuyama sits solo second at seven under, one shot behind 36-hole leader Justin Suh. Perfectly red. Great speed. 66 for the young star. Eight under and up by one here. I would take that 600 any day. Put myself in this position a few times. Didn't do great on the weekends as, as far as I would have hoped, but I, th I think over time and experience, I think it'll get me probably a little bit more comfortable. McElroy lurking though, four under. That's exactly where Rom is. Jordan Speed, three under. Justin Suh, the leader at eight under. Two more days play here at Muirfield Village. Biggest crowd of the week here on this Saturday. How about the rookie, Justin Suh, has played great. 70-66 the first two days, but big names right there. Past champs as well. Hideki's also a great guy. I really enjoy playing with him, so I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun. As the leaders gear up for moving day, Keegan Bradley catches fire in the morning way, carding a seven under 65. How about Keegan Bradley at four under? This is to get it to five. Green's running at about 13 and a half. You can just roll. It just really, really felt good. And then when the putter gets hot like that and combine those up, that's when you can shoot a good one like today. But as the afternoon wave begins, Muirfield Village shows its teeth. A dejected John Rahm. It's been a horrible start for him. Cantley, trouble off the tee. Four over through the first four holes. He's lost two strokes to the field in putting today. In the blink of an eye, it's a triple. And that's going to be the 23rd triple or worse for the week, including six today. We've seen guys that are in contention. Hideki now, Cantley earlier today. Some big numbers out there if you're not careful. Others take advantage of the struggling leaders to surge into contention. Victor Hovland is three under for the day, five for the tournament. Felt like I hit a little bit better today than uh, I had the first couple of days. Going three under the last four, that was awesome. If he makes this eagle putty, I actually go all the way to fourth. Denny McCarthy, how about that? I've been in this position enough to where, you know, it, I've, I've got nothing to lose. I've got nothing to be scared of. Be right. He likes it. Well, why wouldn't he? My goodness. It's Saturday, you know, it's, I'm not too concerned with the leaderboards yet. Maybe back nine on Sunday, uh, I'll start thinking about it. 71 for Si Wu. And I would expect him to play well tomorrow. He loves the big stage. He doesn't get intimidated. I feel great, especially makes two double and shoot on the par this course. Uh, I'll take it. And this would be a great birdie for Rory. He has played this hole perfectly. We could be in the final pairing if he holds it. We're par. Oh, that's huge. That is huge. I was really happy with how I scored out there and, and how I just sort of, you know, hung in there for, for most of the day and played those last few holes pretty well. McElroy shoots 70. Birdie's the 17th to get to 600 par. Kim comes in with 71. Lipsky slips two shots over 17 and 18 to also finish minus six.
It's like a one round shootout for one of the most prestigious titles in golf. Regardless of where you are in the tournament, this golf course makes you a little uncomfortable anyway. So you know, everyone's going to be feeling like that. And, you know, with the way the leaderboard is and, and how bunched it is, it's just going to come down to, you know, who can sort of hold their head the most coming down the stretch. Wide open Sunday heading your way from Dublin, Ohio. Start of the day, there was 31 players within four shots. Now there's only eight. Be the right number. No, oh, it is caught. Zero three putts for Hovland this week. The Norwegian for birdie. Don't count him out yet, Frank. Yeah, that's his 16th birdie of the week. I relied on my putter this week, and even if I'm out of position, I know that I have a short game, so when I hit bad shots, it doesn't bother me as much. Whereas before, it was like, okay, I just wasted a shot that I couldn't afford to waste. Can someone finally take the lid off here at 17? Yes, they can. The first birdie of the day. I was really proud of myself for fighting back, making a birdie on 10 and 11. Even though I made a bogey on 12, I didn't let that deter me. And birdie on 15 and uh, 17 was awesome. I played uh, 16, 17, 18, two under the whole week. Those holes, I think I'll have nightmares uh, playing those holes in my head. Playoff is coming up. Victor Hovland, Denny McCarthy. From Oslo to Ohio, Victor Hovland is the champion. It's a big time talent, having won now four consecutive years on tour. It was really cool to get my first win on, on US soil and as, especially at a tournament like this. Crowds were amazing out there. It felt like a major. It was really cool that I was able to get it done at a place like this.